Hey guys, here's the deal. In 20 years of bass fishing, I've gotten beat. Well, I've gotten beat a lot, <laughs> let's just be honest. But there's some times that I got beat that it just really made me scratch my head. And a lot of those times, they just they go to the bridges. The most obvious thing in a lake, they go to the bridges and they catch them. And especially this time of the year. And it's just, it's one of those things that I just, I wanna talk about. You know, don't forget the bridges. That's, that's kind of the goal for my day to day. I just, looking back through my career, Aaron's one off bridges. Randy Howell beat me in the classic, you know. I was leading the final day and he goes and catches a big old stringer off the bridges. So I just, I wanna bring that to everybody's mind. Don't forget about them. That's the goal today. Oh man. So we get all the way over here, wanting to hopefully catch some fish off bridges, you know. I got cold, a lot colder than I thought, a lot muddier than I thought, and I got construction going on. So it's gonna take that corner out of the equation and uh, they'll probably be banging on pipes before you know it. But we're here, we're gonna try it, see what happens. One of the great things about a bridge is it's a restriction area. You know, it, it's a funnel, it's, it's a spot that a bass can ambush shad really easy. They all have to go through this narrow opening. Well now with that big barge here, this opening just got that much more smaller. So there's current coming through here and now it's going to be even a little bit more current than what we had prior to that being there. So I mean, it could be a positive, who knows? Oh, I about broke my bait. That's a big one. I got a big fish. I just hope it's a bass. <laughs> Golly, I hope it's a bass. I don't know what it is, but it's heavy. I got him on light line, right on that corner, right where they're supposed to be. Be a bass, be a bass. Oh, it's a giant bass. Golly. It is a grown, grown, grown bass. I mean grown. Oh, <laughs> I'm so excited. I just hope I land him. Look at this fish. Look at the size of this fish. <laughs> Golly, look at that fish. Come here, buddy. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here, come here, come here. That big old bite. Oh, yes. Oh, gosh. <laughs> look at that tub. Holy smokes. Man, I threw up there three or four times with the crankbait. Nothing. So I got the jerk bait out. And look what I caught. And I was just thinking maybe I need to switch to more of a chrome colored jerk bait. All right, made a lot of a lot of casts on that corner. Jerk bait. First fish of the day. Way to start, man. I just don't want to let go of her. I'm just so happy to have caught her. Golly, she looks big swimming away. Man, that makes my day. It just makes my day. I just, you know, I talked to her about getting to the boat ramp and not knowing if I'm gonna get any bites. What's the water color? What's the water temperature? You know, it's cold, it's 47 degrees. The water's muddy. You know, you're just the apprehension of not knowing what the day's gonna hold. And we may not get another bite today, but by golly, our first bite was big. <laughs> You can see her going down right there. Look right there. There she is on my Lowrance going down. I mean, that is that fish I just released going back down. Isn't that cool? No doubt, 100%. Just a real quick tip, you know, when you're throwing a jerk bait like this, be sure when you're on your paws, you have slack in that line because if you do not have slack in that line, you're pulling that bait towards you. So it's, it's not just a a true pause. You want to make sure you have slack in that line and then watch that slack to know when you get a bite. I'm throwing just a Berkley Cutter 110. Uh, what I like about this bait is that it's got a little bit longer bill and 
I can really hit them rocks, yet I've got this bait to where it's just floating so slightly up, which is really important. So when I get down in those rocks, it floats up just a little bit. It's got some good rattles in it, you know, for this dirtier water. I like that a lot too. It's got a lot of drawing, drawing power with those rattles. You know, there's some things in fishing that really bother me. And you know, that's like, I don't like going back and forth over the same stretch of bank, but a bridge is an exception. You know, these bridges, these fish swim all around it. There's fish, you know, migrating into the back of this creek. There may be fish that are migrating out. So, you know, a bridge is a spot that I will fish all day long. I'll just keep going back and forth. You know, you, you may catch them on the corners, but it's where a fish, you know, is possibly set up to, to, to feed. Then you catch that fish or he eats, he moves on, another one takes its place. So don't be scared at, at all to fish these bridges. You know, I'll, I, I can fish one all day long and, and catch fish all day long because there's always that many fish moving in and out and around and, and pulling up to feed on the corner. Then they may sit suspend out here, you know, during the daytime or when they're not feeding. That happens a lot on these things. I always like to make it a point to fish all the way down the riprap. You know, I've gone, you know, most of the way, two thirds, three fourths of the way down this and haven't caught anything. But, you know, this last little hundred yards, you know, with the way the wind's been blowing for the last three or four days, they could all be stacked up right in here. That's a great thing about, you know, fishing these bridges and, and causeways. Man, those fish travel a long ways, but it can also, once you find them, you know, you can catch a lot of them in a hurry. There's a good one. Golly. <laughs> He's wanting it a little faster. I went to reel the jerk bait in and he ate it. Not near as big as I thought he was, but he's still a good one. There's some current going through this bridge, but it's a nice fish. There's nothing wrong with it. He stretched my line. The thing about bridges, the deal is, these fish can move vertical really easy. You know, it's a very steep sides. The bridge pilings are, you know, very steep. So in the spring and the pre-spawn, fish can move up and down easily. They just all in a day, you know, today's sunny. Those fish can come right up in the water column and they're comfortable. They get in that zone of water they want to be in. And with all this water that has to be restricted through here, it just makes it a very, very easy ambush point for them. Um, and again, right on a corner, just like that last big one. <laughs> Man, he's so cold he can barely swim. Right on that corner though, that's a key, key spot. I think why those corners are key it's because the rock ends. You've just got a transition right there on the corners. You know, it's, it's about 12 foot deep out here. So that rock just comes to about eight, 10 foot deep and it ends. So it's just a, a transition, you know. How's the fish? That might be a nice one just goes to show they are on those corners. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a nice one. Yeah, buddy, <laughs> I love it. Man, I've been throwing on that corner for a while. Just about to give up today. Went to a jig. Beautiful fish though. He's not as big as I thought he was, but you know those fish, that's the one thing about the bridges. They just they come and they go. It's, it's a spot in my career that people have sat all day long, all day. They will sit right here and make that same cast and they'll win the tournament. That's why I've never won off a bridge because <laughs> I cannot sit here all day and make the same cast, but they do it all the time and they'll catch all size fishes. So that's a good one. But that's one thing about it. Just don't, it's just a high percentage. Don't overlook them. I've made the mistake so many times in my career. I'll be idling 
and I'll think, oh, I need to stop and make a few casts, and I'll just keep idling right underneath the bridge, going down fishing, and the daggum turn will be one right there. That's all I'm trying to say is just don't overlook them. Stop and make a few casts. You know, I caught my fish today on the corners of the bridges. I don't want to say that's the only place you'll catch them because you, you darn sure will catch them on the pilings. I didn't get any bites today doing that. I tried it some, but uh, I didn't get any bites doing that. Now, as far as baits, if I had to narrow it down to three or four baits, one obviously is a jerk bait for the spring. You know, I caught a couple on this one right here. You know, just a jerk bait, something that'll get down, knock on them rocks, let it suspend, also around those pilings. A, uh, another must-have bait would be a swim bait. You know, this right here is just a Berkeley Power Swimmer, uh, 3.8, I got a 3 8 ounce head, um, you know, 14 pound test. A jig, you cannot fish bridges or the bridge corners without a jig. It's just an Andy's Custom Bass jig. Really good little jig right there. I didn't catch any today on these, on the bridges, but you gotta have crankbaits. You know, these, these red ones here are, you know, a great springtime bait, but, uh, you can't, I can't mention fishing bridge openings without mentioning crankbaits. But uh, that's not the only baits that'll work. There's obviously a lot of other ones, but for me, you know, those, those would be the four that I would narrow it down to. You know, learn from my mistakes. I've been doing this a long time. I've passed up, went right underneath those bridges. I didn't stop and make a cast. And uh, there's always a lot of fish caught in a lot of tournaments, especially in the pre-spawn off those bridges.